name is Wayne Sanford. I'm the uh, proprietor, total operator of Inside Firewood. It's a little uh, craft business that grew out of a desire to never go Christmas shopping again and a surplus of firewood. Uh, I've carved barrels whenever I can and other pieces of primarily main hardwood, uh, the serving platters, bowls, Mobius sculptures. I try to make each piece a work of art and a sculpture that can stand multiple orientations so that it can be admired from multiple different directions. So this black cherry tree here, you can see the lumps growing up on the stems. Uh, those are galls or burls. They're a reaction to injury by the tree. And what happens is the water gets in and fungus and starts to rot and the insects get in and start to eat and the tree keeps trying to grow and uh, the grain goes just crazy but makes nice bowls and carved objects. One of the first steps is to try to get the bark off the outside. So this is a huge maple burl and I got all the bark off. Then I removed the heart of the trunk, which I may be able to make something out of this. The staining is where water has gotten into the wood and you get some nice different colors. It's a process called spalting. Here's an example of a cherry burl. So this burl was extraordinarily sound. There was one insect that got through here, but otherwise this is very, very free of insect damage or, or water damage or anything else. So, And I'd name all my pieces. This one's called the Ace of Clubs. It's playing with less than a full deck. I burn in the, the species and the year and my initials as a way of signing my pieces. So these are all things that were carved out of cherry. This is just a piece of one lobe of one burl. They made into a small dish, I call it burlet, and it's uh, suitable if you're on a diet. This one I call shattered, it shows what happens when I do a little too much carving. This is a really nice piece, and this was actually a double burl. There was a, an original burl had grown and was rotting away, and you can see that the tree started to grow a second burl around the first one. So I left the new burl and carved down into the old burl, and I call this piece Beard. Reminds me of a Abraham Lincoln. This large piece in the back, this was all one large burl, and this was, uh, this is all that's left. Uh, you can see the barbs and the, where the burl was growing. These were all potentially new branches. You can see what was underneath the bark. Oh, I call this holding on because it's just barely holding on. I call this piece a drift. It kind of looks like a speedboat. Well, this is uh, all one burl. And this is a case where the, the bark didn't come off very well. So I had to you know, carve down the outside to make it like a bowl. And you can see the, the grain of the, um, of the cherry burl. Yeah, so the, the, the crazy quilt grain structure that happens. But I sawed through the burl, and so what we actually have here is a pair of somewhat functional bowls, which will reassemble into basically a sailing vessel. Or you might, you might think it looks like a face over here, hard to say. There's a little two-toned apple burl from Bodenham, Maine. Ray Mayo gave this to me. And I popped the bark off. So you can see the delineation between sapwood and heartwood. The, the sapwood is a lighter color and the heartwood is the darker brown. This is a smaller maple burl. And you can see there was actually an old burl that had died and it started to rot, which is at least stained is the dark wood and then the fresh wood began to grow around it. And so I couldn't figure out any way to improve on that as a design. So I just sanded it and polished it. And with all these bumps, the bowl will sit. It's pretty easy to find three legs for it to stand on. So there's a couple different attitudes. And when I carve down in, you can see that 
you know, water had penetrated in through all the different cracks, and so there's staining or spalting, which co causes the, the darker browns and black colors and really highlights the grain that you can see in this piece of sugar maple. So I call this one burl on burl. And this one's really interesting. This is a white birch or paper birch burl. And so this growth was just on the side of the tree. So I've removed all the straight grain that was going back and forth and carved down inside. And you can see there's a little spalting that's created streaks. And you can see the grains, there's not a bit of straight grain in here. So I call this one Moby Burl uh, because the base is a one-sided piece. It's a Mobius. But if you start your finger along on the dots and go around, when the first time you come around you're on the side, and the second time your finger comes around, you're on the bottom. And the third time you come around, your finger's on the inside. And then the fourth time you come around, you get back to the, to the top. So it's a one-sided piece. This is a sugar maple parabola. It was a limb growing off a tree. So again, you can see I've sawed down through it and then I carved down to create a bowl and I also emptied out the, the cover so you can see the, the growth that the tree put on trying to plug the opening you know and scab over the wound of the broken branch. This one's called amputation. And I have one other parabola. This is a piece of uh, cottonwood that I found on a beach in South Carolina. The telltale seam is there. I'll pick out some of the pieces here. And then it will go back together and become a pair of bowls. There's a top knot. So I call this guy Igor. I made this uh, rather large bowl. And you left heartwood and staining to as decorative elements around the side. So it basically ends up being a triangular bowl. And then attached to that was a large, just rectangular piece of straight wood. So this is, is it a bowl or is it a cutting board? A strip of uh, ebony shims up the side so that it will sit flat. And I put a couple magnets in to hold a, a knife in place or whatever. This side could be used to hold a serving dish or certainly you could put crackers or cheese or anything like that. These are all finished with a food safe finish so they it can be used for food. Create a mixture of mineral oil and beeswax. Melt the beeswax, pour in the pretty much an equal volume of mineral oil. And so this is a paste that almost melts on your hand and just a little dab of it. And you rub it all over the finished surface. So a little dab that I had on my finger will cover most of this piece. You give it a little while to dry. And you just take an old cloth. And the mineral oil also helps seal the wood. I've collaborated with Meg Zellinger, and we've done a few pieces of where I do the woodwork and she does the stained glass. We're very proud of those. It's a, a discovery process. Every piece of wood is different. Uh, its growth patterns are different. Any rot or insect damage is gonna be different. I take what the wood gives me and try to develop a pleasing and hopefully at least sometimes useful form out of that and then polish it so that it feels good in the hand and shape it so that it looks good to your eye.